Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you're a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike at Tradewinds RV Center. Here to congratulate you on the purchase of your Flagstaff E-Pro 20 BHS. I'm here to walk you around the unit, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things I want you to take into account is where your water and electricity are hooked up. Both of them are gonna be the front side of your off camp side which would be your driver's side and then you're going to have this slide to take into account so park accordingly so that nothing will be touching your slide or hindering its opening and then you can access the power and water connects easily first thing you can do after unhooking your hitch is we're going to level our unit you do have a night docking light here and your power tongue jack retract to bring down extend to bring up. Now should you not have power in the top here behind this rubber stopper is access to use your hand crank to hand crank up and down your leveling jacks. Speaking of power, one thing you might want to do as soon as you arrive, check your battery post. Make sure everything is connected there so you've got a good connection. Once you have your unit level, next thing you're going to do is stabilize your unit. On all four corners, you have stabilizing jacks. First thing I recommend are jack pads. Stabilizing jack pads are going to protect your jack feet from debris, from hot tar, asphalt, things that may get sticky during the summertime. Put jack pads down, it'll better distribute your weight. You can pick those up in our store. Remember, you'd have a 10% off coupon. You use the same hand crank that you use for the power tongue jack, three quarter inch socket. Crank to the right to bring down, left to bring up. I'm just gonna bring these down until they're taut. You don't wanna lift the unit, level the unit at all. You only wanna bring them down until you're touching the jack pads and you feel like you're starting to lift the unit. That's where you wanna stop. Now remember, this is a three quarter inch socket. You can get an impact driver or a drill gun. Just remember when you're getting close to the bottom, be careful that you don't overextend these and lift the unit in any way. So after you lowered all four corners, check your corners, make sure you haven't changed the level of any while you're moving the others around. We've got our unit level, We've got it stable. Next thing you want to do is hook up our power and water. They have a 30 amp power cord. This 30 amp power cord plugs into most campsites. Should you need to reduce to 110 and plug in at home, you do have a 110 adapter amperage reducer to bring you from 30 amp down to 110. Got our power hooked up, let's hook up our water. At the very front of the unit, you have our city water connect. Over to the right, by our power, we have our potable water. Let's talk about city water first. Most importantly, your water pressure regulator. This regulator is gonna reduce your water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI protecting the lines in your unit. You don't know what the campsite has their pressure set at and you want to protect your investment here. Always use a water pressure regulator. Hook that up. Hook your hose up here to the city water connect. Before turning on our water, we're going to come here to our hot water tank, hot water heater. We're going to open that up. And first thing we're going to do is make sure our drain plugs in. You may have left it out from last time you were camping when emptying your hot water heater. Put your drain plug in. Once that drain plug's in, 
you can turn on your city water. Run the hose for a while, then you're gonna come to the top of the unit here and you're gonna burp it. What you're gonna do is you're gonna pull on this pressure regulator and it's gonna reduce, release air that are in the lines. Once you've done that for a few times and the water's running steadily out of here, you know your hot water tank is full and can be lit. Now, electric element down here at the bottom. Only use this, turn it on down here, if you're using 110. Otherwise, you'll turn it on from inside. Now we've got your water hooked up. Should you be going somewhere where you don't have city water connected, you're gonna use potable water. To the left of your power here is your potable water tank. Simply fill this tank. Again, burp your hot water heater. And of course, make sure your drain plugs in. And then turn on your water pump. Now the only time you'll turn on your water pump inside is if you're using potable water. You don't need it for city water connect. We've got our water and electricity. Let's take a walk around the unit and show you a few other things. Again, up here you have a city water connect, cable and satellite hookups, and antifreeze in light so you can winterize the unit yourself. Docking light. Your outdoor shower. Just store this away real quick. Show you your pass-through storage below there. Storage easier with two hands. And a magnet. A magnet here holds that up. Big pass-through storage. Again, your hot water heater. Your slide, which will deploy as soon as we go inside. Here's your gray and black water tanks that we will dump later when leaving the campsite. Access to your bunk room for security reasons. Make sure this is locked in the evening. On the back of your unit, you do have a ladder to go up and check your roof seams. Check the caulking along them. Make sure they're not cracking. At the top, you are pre-wired for a Furion backup camera. You can purchase those in our store and they will electronically communicate between your tow vehicle and this, and you can have a backup camera. Here's your black tank flush at the rear of the unit, which we'll discuss when dumping our tanks. So you have this big metal lip here. Along with this unit is a metal table that clips on there and your griddle with a LP cord hose that connects to this quick connect LP down here. You have a 110 outlet outside. Your awning lights. This is the hood for your microwave. Next to that, your speaker and your porch light. Below that, you have your furnace heat release. Steer clear of that, that can get rather warm. Your low point drain to the right of your entry steps. Draining your water when we leave. And again, your pass through storage. And lastly, on the unit, on the outside, your solar hookup. Should you want to get a solar pad, you can hook that up there and it will triple charge your batteries. Lastly, let's talk about your propane. Your propane tanks come with a regulator at the front. Simply point the arrow to the tank you wish to use. This will be green when full, and then it'll turn red when empty, and then you'll know to switch to the other side. That about covers everything on the outside. Let's take a look on the inside. First thing you'll notice when you walk into the unit, at every unit at the door, will be your fire extinguisher. On the left you have a light, a heat GFI, 110 with GFI. Come all the way to the left when you come in the unit. At the top is the control panel. And this control panel is where you check your tanks, your battery, fresh, black and gray tanks. Just press this, press the button and it'll tell what's in them. Here's your water pump that you turn on if you're using potable water. Here's where you start your hot water heater if you're hooked up to gas or electricity. And here's a tank heater. Should you be in colder weather, turn that on. There's a pad on your tank to keep that warm. You have your lights, interior, porch, awning, and step light. 
Here's your slide in and out and your awning in and out. Talk about your awning real quick here. Have it started. I'm gonna bring this awning out until this flap falls down to 90 degrees. Then you know you've went out far enough. One other thing I wanna point out on your awning is you have these adjustable arms. Should it be raining and your picnic table's down at that end, simply pull down on this. And that's going to tilt your rain. It's all going to drain at this end. Push it back up. And it'll close easily. Now let's go ahead and deploy your slide. Take a look at your drawer. Make sure there's nothing to impede it there. Come up here. And hit slide out. Slide extends in just a matter of moments. And when you get to the end, you'll hear a stop. Slides deployed. Now let's take a walk around the unit and check out some other things. You have one touch lighting in here. Your sink. Access to all the plumbing. Bottle opener. This glass top makes an excellent backsplash. When your gas is full, you turn this to light, hit ignite, and you do have electric lighters on these. Same thing over here on your stove. You do have a light and fan above your stove here. Do you have solar on top? And this will show you all your solar levels. Self-explanatory microwave. And your fridge here. There's your control for your temperatures. One thing I do want to mention back here in your bathroom is your 110 and your light. Up top you have a hand control fan. So if you crank to the left to open, turn the fan on, turn the fan off. Your skylight. Keep an eye on all your plumbing fixtures. There, there, and here behind the toilet. This is your temporary home, you want to maintain it as so. Your bunk areas, you do have the one touch lighting. Also have one tens in your bunk areas. Under this bunk, right now is your ladder. And then big storage area underneath your bottom bunk. Let's get underneath your fridge here talk about a couple of things this black panel here is your access panel with a fan to your breaker box and fuse box now it looks like you have uh, some 15s 30 40 I recommend having a handful of these with you when you go camping to the right of that is a 12 volt carbon monoxide detector the reason I mentioned this 12 volt is this is always running off your battery so unless you're plugged in, you're going to be leaving for the day, if you're dry camping, disconnect your battery so that this doesn't run your battery down while you're gone. You can shut off everything and this will still be running off your battery. All right. Of course your table, these legs remove. The table sets on these lips here. Then take your back cushions and put them in the middle for another sleeping area. Bottom of your bed here is your inverter. That is for taking your 12 volt battery and inverting everything so that it can run everything inside the unit. Very on television. 
and sound system from IRV Technologies. Dual zoned, you can play your music indoors or out. This is a Wi-Fi Ranger. Um, if you're, you're at the back of the park and you're not picking up good Wi-Fi, turn on this Wi-Fi Ranger. There's all your information for it. And it'll be like you're right next to their modems. Do you have storage up here? Push me and lift. A couple of USB ports, one tens. You know, in your ceiling is your AC unit with hand control. And over here is your suburban thermostat. That'll control heat and air. Lastly in the ceiling here is your smoke alarm. Well, it covers everything on the inside. I do want to mention that you also have this control here because this is a heated mattress. Plug that in and you have heat. Well, it covers everything on the outside. Let's get ready to leave the park and dump our tanks. So one of the first things we're going to do, we can actually do before leaving the campsite because this is clean water. Here's your low point drain. You know, untwist these two plugs here and drain that water out. Next thing we're gonna do is come around to your hot water heater. You're gonna wanna go ahead and burp your line again, let the air out, and then pull your drain plug. It's gonna drain all your hot water out. And lastly, your fresh water drain. Should you have been using your potable water, just pull that handle there. It's all clean water, it doesn't matter where you dump it. Now we're going to come around to the rear of the unit to our dump station. And inside your convenience pack will be this sewage hose. Note we do have bigger, stronger, longer, nicer sewage hoses in our store you can pick up worth the investment, but this one will suffice. Plug it in, pull your black tank. Now, after you have your black tank pulled, sounds like everything's drained out, leave that black tank handle open. Come to the rear of your unit. Again, use your pressure, your uh, pressure uh, reduced valve. Put that on here. Run that for about five minutes. After you've ran that for about five minutes, cleaned out your tank real good. Don't be in a hurry. Get them nice and clean. Come back over and close your black handle. After you close your black handle, pull your gray handle. That's going to be your shower water, your sink waters. It's going to be your cleaner waters. It's going to clean out your sewage hose for you. And then store it away in a nice clean area. They also have your hose there that you can go ahead and spray this out if you so need to. That about covers everything. Hope you guys enjoy this unit for many years to come. And as we like to say here at Tradewinds, happy camping.